It's a hard fall from the glories of the sporting world to the terrifying and often demeaning world of prison. A lot of athletes were at the pinnacle of their sports careers before they were locked away to serve hard time for their crimes. And you know what they say, out of sight, out of mind. Here's a look at some incredible athletes you forgot are currently in jail. Ray Carruth this Carolina Panthers receiver was drafted in 1997 with hopes that he would become a franchise player that could help the team achieve prominence in the league. Ray Carruth's rookie season was a success, with 44 receptions and four touchdowns that put him atop the freshman class for that year. Off the field, he was engaging in an on-again, off-again relationship with a Charlotte woman named Sharika Adams that would culminate in her pregnancy, which Carruth did not want. She was later shot in her car and succumbed to her injuries and her son was delivered prematurely and suffered permanent brain damage from blood and oxygen loss. Carruth had been in the car ahead of her and stopped abruptly on the side of the road before she was attacked, signaling her to pull over as well. He was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder, after the shooter testified in court that he was hired by Carruth to kill Adams. That's the bitch I was referring to who got me into this. Mm -hmm. I did it because he made me do it. He was sentenced to 18 years and 11 months and maintains his innocence. I was not there. I didn't see the shooting. I didn't hear any shots. I can't testify to anything that happened to Sharika on Ray Road. Oscar Pistorius. At one time, the story of Oscar Pistorius was among the most awe-inspiring in sports history. Born with a birth defect that left both of his legs without fibulas, Pistorius's legs were amputated during his infancy. But that didn't stop the Blade Runner from winning a gold medal at the Athens Paralympics in 2004, and later competing in the 400-meter run at the 2012 Olympics in London. He was an overnight celebrity and earned very high-profile endorsement deals as a result of the fanfare. Just six months later, however, Pistorius was arrested in connection with the shooting death of his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. Pistorius claimed he mistook Riva for a home invader and shot her at their home in South Africa. But prosecutors argued that the murder was premeditated, as Pistorius and Steenkamp often fought. Plus, Pistorius had a history of violence against women. After a seven-month trial, Pistorius was found guilty of culpable homicide and served a year in prison before being released to house arrest. Not satisfied with the punishment, the appeals court overturned the conviction and found Pistorius guilty of murder in a second trial. For that verdict, he'll serve at least 15 years behind bars. Fast Eddie Johnson Not to be confused with fellow NBA retiree Eddie Johnson, Edward Lee Fast Eddie Johnson Jr. was a full-fledged star. Averaging 15 points a game and shooting nearly 50% from the floor, he represented the Atlanta Hawks in two consecutive All-Star games, and his explosive speed and slashing ability netted him a career total of over 10,000 points. After basketball, the former star completely lost control. Described as a habitual felon, Johnson has been arrested roughly 100 times, with allegations ranging from burglary to possession of marijuana. But it was his conviction of sexual battery and molestation of an 8-year-old girl that landed him a long stint in the slammer. He's now serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Darren Sharper One of the most high-profile professional athletes currently serving time is former broadcaster and five-time Pro Bowl NFL safety Darren Sharper. Sharper had enjoyed a highly successful collegiate and professional career, and after retirement, he went on to work as an analyst for NFL Network. He might have been a compelling on-air personality, but his behind-the-scenes behaviors were incredibly disturbing. Sharper was accused of working with a former police officer to drug and rape as many as 16 women in four states. He pled no contest to the crimes in 2016 and was sentenced to 20 years by the state of Louisiana as well as 18 years in federal court. He was able to knock that sentence down to nine years of incarceration thanks to a plea deal, and Sharper was still nominated for the Hall of Fame despite his conviction. Mel Hall Left fielder Mel Hall had a respectable 15-year pro career, playing for the Chicago Cubs, the Cleveland Indians, the New York Yankees, and eventually a Japanese team. He might not have been an all-star, but he still put together a solid career. In 2009, however, Hall earned an entirely different kind of notoriety altogether after he was convicted of three counts of aggravated sexual assault and two counts of indecency with a 12-year-old girl whose youth basketball team he coached. During the trial, multiple individuals testified against the former baseball player, 
claiming that he often acted inappropriately and even lived with a 15-year-old girlfriend for several years. Hall was sentenced to four decades in prison. Daryl Henley An L.A. native, Daryl Henley was a star cornerback at UCLA and was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams, for whom he was Defensive Rookie of the Year. He was in the starting lineup for six years and in December 1994 took the field for the Rams' last California home game before the team moved to St. Louis. That would also turn out to be Henley's last pro game. In 1995, Henley was one of four defendants convicted in a cocaine trafficking case. Henley claimed only to have financed the criminal doings of a childhood friend, but even bars couldn't stop his illegal antics. While awaiting sentencing, he allegedly convinced a guard to smuggle him a cell phone to hire a hitman to take out the judge in his trial, along with a cheerleader who testified against him. Ultimately, neither hit came through because federal agents had secretly tape-recorded Henley in a cell talking about the $100,000 hit jobs. So, in addition to his drug charges, he was also on the hook for conspiracy to commit murder, among other charges. Henley ultimately got a plea deal that put him away for 41 years. Sam Hurd Wide receiver Sam Hurd spent five years with the Dallas Cowboys and one season with the Chicago Bears, collecting a respectable 53 receptions and 739 receiving yards. He stayed busy off the field, too, hosting a football show called Inside the Huddle. But his other pastime was drug trafficking, and in 2011 he was arrested outside a Chicago steakhouse, where he received a kilogram of cocaine from an undercover officer. That same night, he reportedly told the officer that he wanted to buy up to 10 kilograms of cocaine and 1,000 pounds of marijuana on a weekly basis. So, clearly it wasn't all for him. In 2013, he received a 15-year prison term for being part of a group that was trying to set up a three-state cocaine and marijuana distribution ring. Keith Wright Defensive tackle Keith Wright was a sixth-round draft pick out of the University of Missouri who bounced around the NFL a lot. But after his career ended, he turned to a life of crime, with police linking him to three home invasions in 2011 alone. In all, Wright rang up 19 felony charges over his spree, including kidnapping, armed robbery, false imprisonment, and sexual assault. A year later, he was given one of the longest sentences a former professional athlete ever faced, 234 years and eight months. Anthony Wayne Smith a first-round draft pick by the Oakland Raiders in 1990, Anthony Wayne Smith lasted seven years in the NFL. Sadly, he was far more successful at the criminal side of life. In 2003, he was accused of firebombing a furniture store, a charge that ultimately went nowhere after two juries couldn't reach a verdict. Later, he was arrested and put on trial for killing three men, brothers Ricky and Kevin Nettles in 1999 and Dennis Henderson in 2001. Worse than simply killing them, he played with them too. With the Nettle brothers especially, he had disguised himself as a police officer and approached them at their car wash. Then he kidnapped them, tortured them, and finally shot them to death. With Anderson, he was more straightforward, simply kidnapping him and then stabbing him to death. In January 2016, Smith was found guilty of the three murders and earned himself three consecutive life sentences. Chad Curtis as a star for the New York Yankees, Chad Curtis earned World Series rings in 1998 and 1999. In retirement, he worked at various high schools, including Lakewood High School in Lake Odessa, Michigan, starting in 2011. It was there that his life took a turn for the criminal. While working as a volunteer strength trainer, he began to offer massages to the girl athletes, but not the boys. Three girls, all between the ages of 13 and 16, later testified that his massages turned sexual, with him touching and fondling various private parts, both above and below the belt. He accused the girls of lying and claimed that he was a man of God who just wants to help people, and even planned to write a book with one of his accusers. But the judge wasn't impressed, and he was sentenced to 7 to 15 years in prison. Clifford Etienne before sports, Clifford Etienne was basically a dumb high school teen who held up some customers at a shopping mall and was charged as an adult. While behind bars, Etienne took up boxing and notched a 30-0 record, en route to becoming the champion of the Louisiana State Prison's boxing circuit. With good behavior, Etienne's sentence was cut way down to 10 years, and he immediately went pro upon his 1998 parole. Etienne quickly rose through the boxing ranks winning 19 of his first 20 fights. His status as a rising star was tarnished in 2003, however, after post-prison Mike Tyson knocked Etienne out in just 49 seconds. 
Etienne continued boxing, but was soon back to his old criminal ways. In August 2005, Etienne broke into a check cashing place in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and stole $1,900. To get away, he tried to steal a car with two kids inside. When that didn't work, he stole another car, which also had two children inside. He didn't get far before he wrecked that one, and police caught up with him after he fired a malfunctioning gun at them. He didn't give his lawyers much to work with. They argued that Etienne was so high on drugs, he wasn't aware of his actions, and that he'd suffered brain damage from his boxing. The excuses didn't work, and Etienne was sentenced to more than a century in prison. These days, he's given up the gloves in favor of a paintbrush, but his time served hasn't been without conflict. Thomas Paine Finally, there's Thomas Paine, whose history of jail time is more chaotic than any action he might have seen on the basketball court. Before going pro, Thomas Paine had been a standout player at the University of Kentucky, who in the 1960s became the first African-American to play ball for the school. He went pro in 1971 by joining the Atlanta Hawks. But after just one year, rape charges sent his career straight to the trash. He was arrested and convicted for raping a woman in Georgia and received a five-year sentence for that. Upon release from the Peach State Penitentiary, he was immediately extradited to Kentucky to face charges for another rape. He was convicted of that one too and received a life sentence. However, sentencing laws changed sometime thereafter, meaning Payne found himself paroled in 1983. He became a boxer and an actor with this new lease on life, but he promptly laid waste to his second chance in 1986 when he raped yet another woman, this time in California. He was paroled for that in 2000, but then Kentucky came calling again. Turns out the California rape conviction meant he violated his Kentucky parole. Because of that, the state could legally enforce his previous life sentence. He was sent back to a Kentucky prison, and there he remains indefinitely. He's up for parole in 2018, but judging on how he's clearly learned absolutely no lessons from anything he's done, his chances of seeing freedom again are slim at best. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.